Well, the Green Party is today calling for an additional £22 billion to bring what they say are crumbling NHS hospitals, buildings and outdated equipment up to date. So let's speak now to their co-leader, Adrian Ramsey, who joins us from Norfolk. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, £22 billion, it's an awful lot of money, isn't it? Where, where is it going to come from? We are putting this forward because we can see that our hospital buildings are crumbling and the NHS workers that we speak to tell us all the time that they're working in buildings that are crumbling, whether that be hospitals, whether that be doctor's surgeries. And so we've got to put the investment into the hospital buildings, just like we need to put it into our hospital staff because the NHS wards are severely overstretched. And we've set out in our manifesto exactly how we can fund funding both for the NHS and for social care to invest in a better future in restoring these crucial health services. We would ask the very richest in society, the multimillionaires, the billionaires, to pay modestly more in tax. I'm talking a 1% tax on wealth and assets over 10 million, which could enable us to address the fact that we've got crumbling NHS buildings, staff severely overstretched and patients in corridors. And it's about the type of society we want to have. You're talking about millionaires and billionaires, but you're also saying that the people paying, earning more than £50,000 a year would pay more tax under your plans. And that could include senior experienced nurses, couldn't it? The very kind of people working in the NHS who, who you want to help out with, with better hospitals. So the particular proposal you highlight there is around national insurance, where at the moment people earning under 50000 actually pay a higher proportion of their salary on national insurance than people earning over 50000 Our proposal, again, is fairly modest. It would result in someone earning 55000 a year, paying £5 extra per week. And we think that that's a good value for money, because what would people get from that? Well, at the moment, you can't get access to an NHS dentist in many parts of the country. You're forking out for that. You're paying higher prices for train fares, which are some of the most expensive in Europe. We've got energy bills skyrocketing, whereas if we invested in renewable energy, we could bring down energy prices. And if we invest in home insulation, we could bring down the cost of all of our bills, because at the moment, the heating bill that you see going up and up is often going out of the doors and out of the windows because we have some of the leakiest homes in Europe here in the UK. So, yes, we are looking to invest. We're looking to invest in warmer homes, cheaper bills, lower food and energy prices, people not having to fork out for an NHS dentist. And the modest tax changes we're proposing would overall clearly leave people better off because we'd have the public services and we'd be tackling the cost of living crisis. I wonder, though, about the, the nation's finances, the UK's finances, because the Institute for Fiscal Studies have had a look at this independently, and they're saying that, you know, debt is going to continue rising over the next few years. Uh, it's already almost as big, our debt is almost as big as the size of the whole economy and what we all produce. Um, and when you're committing to 22 billion on this, 30 billion on, on health care, 5 billion on, on, on local spending, on museums and theatres, um, a lot of people will be worried about increasing the, the country's debt mountain. Well, there's a number of independent experts who've analysed our manifesto and the first person the BBC quoted on that after we launched our manifesto a few weeks ago was Aaron Advani from the University of Warwick, who said that our plans are economically credible. And indeed, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, who you quote yourself, has said that there's a conspiracy of silence between Labour and the Conservatives, pretending that they're going to be able to put the funding into the National Health Service, but not being willing to say where it will come from. The IFS has said the next government is either going to need to cut public services or increase taxes. And the Green Party is very clear that some modest changes, increasing taxes modestly on those with the broader shoulders, is what we need to do if we're going to restore our public services and if we're going to defend our environment. And these investments are really important, both from the point of view of public services, but also from the point of view of addressing the climate crisis, because we know that the costs of not addressing the climate crisis and of climate change getting worse and worse all around us are far greater than the costs of investing. So this is about investing in a different type of future where we do defend our environment, where people do have access to the public services they need and where we build more housing to address the council house waiting list. OK, so three days to go till we all go to vote. Um, 
If the polls are right or anything like right, uh, it looks like a, a Labour victory with potentially a sizable majority. You say that you're hoping to have a handful of MPs, maybe four constituencies you've been focusing on. But how much sway could four or five Green MPs really have in a parliament where one party is dominant in government? Well, I'd turn that question around and say people could add four or five extra MPs to Labour's total or indeed to the Conservative total. But what difference does that make in the scheme of a, a party that's got hundreds of MPs? Labour's on course to have a big majority anyway. Wouldn't it be better, given that we know that that's going to be the result, to vote Green wherever you are in the country to send a strong message to the other parties that you want action to defend our environment and restore our public services, but also to have a group of Green MPs inside Parliament so that we can be influencing the debate in Parliament, just as we have been in this election, to push Labour to be bolder on these crucial issues of restoring our NHS, of tackling sewage in our rivers, of building more affordable housing. Green MPs can really push Labour to be bolder, and that's where people's vote can make a big difference, because if you're in one of those seats where Greens have got a great chance of winning, then you can see that your constituency will stand out far more by having a Green MP than by having one of hundreds of Labour MPs. And yes, in Herefordshire, in Waveney Valley, in Bristol and Brighton, the polls have got us odds on a fantastic chance of winning. People know that in those areas they can vote Green and get a Green MP. And there's so many other areas of the country as well where our momentum is growing, where we've got lots of Green councillors on the grounds. People are used okay. to having Green representing them and they can vote Green with confidence that it will make a big difference on Thursday. Adrian Ramsey, co-leader of the Green Party. Thank you very much indeed. Thank and of you. course, you can find out who's uh, standing in all the different constituencies around the UK on the BBC website.